Today we're diving into an exciting new update from MetaMask. It's the launch of MetaMask Snaps Open Beta, and it marks a major milestone for realizing MetaMask's vision of an open, permissionless system of innovation. Today we're investigating what it is, how it works, and who can benefit from it. So stick around till the end, and don't miss out on the walkthrough, so you can learn how to get started with MetaMask Snaps right away. You're likely already familiar with MetaMask, which thanks to the popular MetaMask wallet, has established itself as the leading Web3 self-custody platform in the space. Their mission is to democratize access to the decentralized web, and they're now expanding the platform's capabilities. On September 12th, MetaMask launched its MetaMask Snaps Open Beta in an important move towards permissionless innovation in the space. Now, the beta targets advanced Web3 users and it offers curated snaps in three categories. These are transaction insights, interoperability, and notifications. And we're gonna explore these in just a second. But first, what exactly are snaps? Well, they're a set of new features and functionalities created by third-party developers that the MetaMask users can install directly into their wallets. Think of all the features like ad blockers, note-taking tools, and translators that you might use on a day-to-day -day basis when you're navigating the internet. Similarly, each snap serves as an additional feature within the MetaMask wallet to enhance the Web3 experience. And users can actually decide which ones they want to install based on relevance, and they can add specific functionalities to the MetaMask wallet. And as for the developers, Snaps capture a fuller extent of Web3 innovation by enabling any developer to bring their specialist expertise and build for the platform. Now, this approach of innovating for both the users and the developers can empower the broader developer community to keep building. And it also aligns with MetaMask's vision of a decentralized, permissionless approach to Web3 innovation. Now we'll dive deeper into how snaps are useful for both the users and the developers in a second, but quickly let's find out what kind of snaps we can already start exploring. So just to reiterate quickly, the three categories of snaps available at present are transaction insights, interoperability, and notifications. The first phase of the launch introduced 36 snaps, and a sample of the initial snaps that support transaction insights include Wallet Guard, Forta, Blockfence, and Threat Intel. Now in the realm of interoperability, the currently available snaps allow bridging from MetaMask to major blockchains like Bitcoin, Tezos, Solana, and Mina. MetaMask users can more easily interface with decentralized apps that use the XMTP protocol by signing in without a transaction signature via the sign in with XMTP snap. And for the in-wallet notifications, users can turn to snaps including push protocol, wallet chat, and the Web3MQ encrypted chat protocol. We know what kind of snaps we can get started with. Now let's talk about how MetaMask Snaps aims to customize the MetaMask wallet for users. Firstly, the platform offers a variety of tools which serve as an additional feature within the user's MetaMask wallet. This means you can tailor your Web3 experience by choosing snaps that align with your specific interests. For example, let's say you're keen on in-wallet alerts and minimizing transaction risks. There's a category of snaps designed just for that. On the other hand, if you're looking to diversify your digital assets across multiple blockchains, there's a category of snaps to help with interoperability. Now, what does this mean for developers? MetaMask Snaps actually opens the door for any developer interested in extending wallet functionalities. And here's the kicker, developers maintain full ownership of their code. They're also responsible for the interactions with users, be it for bug fixes, new features, or even enhancing UX. For now, the snaps are available through an allow list based directory, audited for security and manually added by the MetaMask team. And until a permissionless standard eventually replaces this, the curated approach is expected to continue. And how does one go about building a permissionless standard? Well, ultimately MetaMask aims to establish a permissionless system where any Web3 dev can create a snap and make it available to all the MetaMask users. And the point is to contribute to a vibrant, decentralized marketplace of tools, features, functionalities, and eventually to customize the user experience. Now here's an important disclaimer, if you're eager to get started, the MetaMask Snaps Open Beta is just a foundational step. It's important to note that this is not the final version and Snaps will undergo regular enhancements to both the UX and the platform functionality as we move forward. So if you're an early adopter looking to start exploring MetaMask Snaps, the Open Beta is currently accessible on extension V11 and above. Mobile integration is on the way. 
For more information, the MetaMask Snaps directory lists all the snaps that are available for the open beta, and users are encouraged to submit any feedback they have to the MetaMask team. You can also learn more on the MetaMask Snaps website, and any additional information can be found within the MetaMask support page or in the FAQs. Now we're about to get our hands dirty and dive into the snaps, but before we get to the walkthrough, it's crucial to stress the importance of safety. The MetaMask Snaps open beta is designed for advanced users who have a solid grasp of MetaMask and the broader Web3 landscape, as well as an understanding of the risks tied to beta testing any kind of third-party application. A few core principles stand out for secure navigation of MetaMask snaps, also with Web3 in general. First of all, keep your SRP or your secret recovery phase secret. Don't share it with anyone. Don't email it to your grandmother and certainly don't pull it up during a live stream for everyone to see. Secondly, many snaps are focused on enhancing security. Think about Forta, SafeRoot or BlockFence. You can already leverage these tools to significantly improve your Web3 operational security. Number three, always use the official MetaMask Snaps directory to ensure you're installing a genuine snap. And it might sound basic, but avoid clicking on links and untrusted or unknown sources. A single click can sometimes lead to significant issues. Another one is when in doubt, just pause. If something feels off, you can take a moment, sit back, think it through or ask for a second opinion. And finally, you can stay updated by regularly visiting MetaMask's official channels, the support pages and the FAQ page. The point is simple, it's in beta, it's unfinished and you need to keep your wits about you. Just because the snap is in the allow list does not mean that that snap can't have bugs or vulnerabilities, it only means that the authors aren't actively trying to defraud you. Right, so now that we've covered the what and the why of MetaMask Snaps open beta, let's actually go and use the available snaps because it only takes a few clicks to get started and it's actually quite a straightforward process. So if we head over to the MetaMask Snaps directory at snaps.metamask.io, we're going to be confronted with the first 36 snaps that are made available. Now, if I go and pick a random one like Wallet Guard and we add it to MetaMask, well, first of all, we can see the description of what the snap does. We can see where it comes from, what version it is, who developed it, etc. all on screen. So we're gonna go and add it to our MetaMask wallet. We are greeted by a MetaMask pop-up. We accept the connection and it's gonna ask us if we want to grant these rights to the snap. So we accept and we install. And then I am guided towards the Wallet Guard website once the installation is complete. So let's go ahead and explore that. If I scroll down on the website, I'm going to see exactly what it is that Wallet Guard does. And let's install. Installation complete. Moving onwards. Okay, so at this point, we should probably verify that the Wallet Guard snap is indeed active. So I'm going to go back to my MetaMask wallet. If I click on these three dots and navigate to settings, then I go to the snap section. Brilliant, I see that Wallet Guard is active. So at this point, if I simulate a transaction, I should be greeted by a Wallet Guard pop up. Um, and I should also be able to see inside the wallet transaction pop up if I'm interacting with uh, a malicious uh, account or not. I can see the details of the transaction here, how much gas I'm likely to pay. But if I click on the Wallet Guard Snap tab, I can also see insights from Wallet Guard. Now, if I'm interacting with uh, an illegitimate or malicious account or an address, then this is where I'm going to get that insight. Next, we're going to explore Shapeshift Multi-Chain from the Interoperability category. So if I go to the filter options on the MetaMask Snaps directory, I'm going to remove the notification and transaction insights categories. So I only have all of the snaps associated with interoperability. Then I'm going to scroll down and find Shapeshift Multi-Chain. And we're going to go through a similar process of adding it to our MetaMask wallet. So let's press the button connection request. We're going to connect. Perfect. So we get another pop up from MetaMask, which is alerting us to the types of controls that we're granting. Next, we're going to activate and pair the Shapeshift snap with our MetaMask wallet. Uh, so we could confirm and install. And once the MetaMask connection is complete, uh, we go over to the trade slash bridge tab over on the left hand side. And here I can select the amount of ETH that I want to trade and I'll be receiving a non EVM asset like BTC. Uh, so here we can see the amount that I'm sending, 
the expected amount that we'll receive and the train that's being used. So once we confirm, we get the wallet guard app pop up again, which we just installed. So it's now active. We continue over to the MetaMask pop up. And here, once again, we can see through the wallet guard snap whether or not we're interacting with a malicious address. Now everything seems to be okay here. So we can confirm. We go back to the details tab, have a one final view of the transaction. And if we're satisfied, we can go ahead and confirm. And we wait for a little while and voila, the trade is complete. So there we have it. MetaMask Snap's open beta is live and kicking for anyone who wants to enhance their Web3 experience using additional features and functionalities. We've seen that the initial list of 36 snaps are categorized into transaction insights, interoperability, and wallet notifications for now, and we expect many more to be added. So thank you for tuning in. Let us know what type of snaps you'd like to see next and stay defiant.